One, two, one, two, you know how we do with your boy BQ, with a good hour of free time, <laughs> so I can sit down and talk to you guys with the B-Side Podcast. I've been communicating to you guys that uh, work has been too much for me lately, so that's why I took a break from the cool side, the cool side, the cool factor podcast, and you know, I've done my best to get some content up to you guys, up for you guys, but it's been really, really difficult. But I'm expecting by the middle of uh, this month for things to slow down a little bit for me. But I do have some free time right now to talk to you guys about some of the things going on in the world of wrestling that are affecting Impact Wrestling. This is also the return to streaming platforms. I know we've taken a break for a while from Apple Podcasts, Google, platforms of that nature. Uh, But this is the return and there's going to be more content coming on there soon. But... I owe it to you guys who have uh, followed me for a long time to uh, to come with a podcast, and that's what I'm going to do for you guys today. So usually when I do a B-side podcast, I talk about one singular topic. That's usually kind of been my thing. That's usually where I like to leave it, but I'm going to talk to you guys about a few things going on right now, uh, number one being Kylie Ray. So we have seen, and you've probably seen, that she's going to be competing at the NWA pay-per-view, teaming with Taryn Terrell. And they'll be going up against Molina and Thunder Rosa. So I didn't catch this last episode of NWA. To be frank with you, it hasn't been very good since they've returned. But, you know, they get get a pass because they're, uh, you know, everyone gets a pass with what's going on in the world. But they they rebooted a lot later than everyone else. You know what I mean? So giving them a chance still uh, because they've done really quality stuff in the past. So I have to believe they're going to continue to do that going forward. But... Kylie Ray is going to be in this match. A lot of eyebrows raised. Saying, what is uh, Impact Wrestling's Kylie Ray doing at NWA? And I've seen on Facebook, like, a lot, a lot, a lot of people <laughs> are just like, hey, guys, don't worry. She's contracted to Impact. It's all good. You know, because there was this article that came out a couple months ago that she was still technically under contract with Impact. She's going to appear this weekend at Warrior Wrestling. And uh, that's in Chicago. She's taken on... Holly Dead. It was initially Thunder Rosa, I believe, but NWA pulled her because they got the pay-per-view this weekend, I think. Uh, and so Holly Dead has taken her, her spot. Now, I've fully intended on going to Warrior Wrestling, and I've really wanted to meet Kylie Ray for a while. She actually, her, one of her last independent dates was really, really local, and I completely forgot to buy tickets. Um, but I, I did plan on driving up to Chicago for this, and as I was going to buy the tickets, just like <laughs> Just like it uh, seems to happen, work like clockwork. I checked my uh, Air Force Reserve schedule, and that was my reserve weekend. So instead of Warrior Wrestling, it's going to be a weekend warrior for me. So I won't be able to, to check it out. But I have seen on Facebook. Um, I haven't, not so much on Twitter. I don't get on Twitter as much now. But I've seen on Facebook a lot of people, hey, guys, don't worry. She's contracted to Impact Wrestling. So I looked into this, and I don't have, I can't say that I have a concrete answer for you guys. This is what I'm saying right now is not concrete, is not the gospel. Um, but to, I believe that Kylie Ray was released from the company, um, and I think it was something they did quietly. So I, I don't have, I don't know that for sure. So please don't hear that. Oh, BQ said this. I'm, I'm giving you the information that I believe to be true. But I'm not 100% on it. But I think she was quietly released from the company. Because uh, let, let's take common sense in a, into account. Billy Corgan is not going to uh, give Impact stars work. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's she's, He's already said he's not going to work with the company. You know, and things could change. But I highly doubt he, he call up Impact to like, hey, you know, would like to book Kylie Ray. I'm fairly certain she is free agent status. And, you know, we know that there's a lot going on with Kylie Ray, but it also seems like she's she doesn't exactly tie up her loose ends. And when you don't do things like that and you don't get closure, uh, you, you typically continue to have issues. You know, she was with NWA, then decided I'm out, you know, 
and she's done like interviews and podcasts and, and stuff like that. And they'll ask her, you know, what was going on. And she usually, she, she'll give an answer around uh, mental health and stuff, but she usually beats around the bush quite a bit when it comes to like, why did I actually leave? And then I think we, we saw that with impact and then she just showed up in impact. You know what I mean? Like, I think that AEW felt like, okay, we, you know, um, we have the right of first refusal. Like when she decides to come back to wrestling, she'll come back to our company and then she just shows up somewhere else and then has similar issues there and then shows up at uh, NWA. So it's to my understanding that some people in the industry close to her uh, or, you know, whether it be impact, whatever are, how can I say it? shocked you know what I mean I think I think people support her and support in what you know support um, her happiness and her health but it is also weird at the same time when you know you're just, you're telling someone hey I, I need space I need this and this and then you just kind of pop up again out of nowhere and you know maybe maybe no one deserves an explanation uh, but sometimes we don't get that explanation you get very confused on on what's going on so it just kind of seems like she leaves one place and then pops up at another place like nothing's wrong um so there's a pattern here and you know hopefully hopefully we don't see the same the same things happen with her um you know with nwa but uh my gut my gut tells me she's with that company now i don't expect to see her back on impact wrestling anytime soon and it's you know i'll use this analogy here it's kind of like you know, most of you are guys that listen to me. If you're talking to a girl, you really like this girl, and then she's just like, hey, you know, I need a little bit of space. I'm not really ready for a relationship right now. Um, I will let you know when I am, though. And like, Okay, cool. You know, you got, I got your back. Um, I'll give you all the time and space you need. And then two weeks later, has a, has a, has a boyfriend. Facebook official, you know, hey, you know, I love this guy. Da, da, da. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought you needed some time and space, you know, so it's going to rub people the wrong way. And I think that it has from what I understand. So, um, let's get on to something else here. This, we're going to talk Kenny Omega here for a second. Don Callis. There was some information that came out a couple months ago, not a couple months ago, I guess whenever this current set of tapings happened. Whereas, oh, you know, Kenny Omega and Don Callis, they, they shot for one day and they left. You know, they, uh, and, uh, some of the dirties tried to make a big deal out of it. Some, you know, looked into, oh, maybe he dropped the title or, or, you know, maybe he's not really part of their plans going forward. So, Kenny Omega leaves. He's done, he's done a few set of tapings with Impact, right? We can, we can all agree that, uh, since the top of the year, he, he's been involved in pretty much every set of tapings. He's only ever been there for one day. He's never stayed for a whole set of tapings. He records what he needs to record for himself, and then he's out. He's not contracted to the company. He's not staying the whole time. He comes, he does what he needs to do. So just because this kind of made waves in the media, people kind of wanted to run with it like, um, you know, oh, maybe, you know, there's no plans from going forward. Maybe drop the title. I mean, is it, is, you know, try to try to spin it in a way that's, you know, kind of comes off negative. But that's that's the way it is. He's always done what he had to do. And, you know, Don Callis, whether he was he's just an on screen talent or he was behind the scenes, um, I've I've heard it, I've read it, you know, multiple multiple people that he's never done a whole lot. You know, it's this has always been Scott Dumore's thing. And you know, t- to be perfectly honest with, with Don Callis, I think that he at one point when he when he took the job to join Impact, you know, to to be the uh, executive vice president for Impact Wrestling, I think he expected to to sign Chris Jericho, to sign Kenny Omega, uh, possibly the Young Bucks. He knew the Good Brothers at the time, where you know the contract was um, w- was coming to an end with WWE. You know, before they had resigned, I think there was a lot of people that he set up. I know who we're gonna get. We're gonna go. We're gonna go real big. And then AEW happened. And all those guys went there. And then he was in a situation was like, oh, crap, you know. And I think he's always wanted to be there. I think he's always wanted to be a part of AW. 
I think he's had one foot out the door with Impact ever since AEW got off the ground. I think he's always wanted to be over there. And that's why he left a executive vice president role to go be a manager. And I think it's disappointing. I think it's, um, I you know, you guys know I used to complain about his commentary, how shit it was, and how much he just annoyed me on TV. Like, now I really enjoy his on-screen character, which is a crazy thing. But, but you know, when he first started doing commentary and... You know, I used to get so freaking mad that he would, you know, one one match be a heel, the next be a baby face, and then, you know, the the Madison, the bad Madison rain jokes about her in the heart dungeon and um, bickering back and forth with Josh and having an opinion one week and then saying the exact same uh, exact opposite the next week. Like I couldn't stand this dude on commentary. Could not stand him. And it all kind of makes sense to me now. Where it's like, dude, this guy wasn't this guy wasn't even all the way in. In my opinion, I don't think he was 100% like I'm going to I'm, I'm all in on impact wrestling like Scott Dumore is, you know, I think we can all see that he is. But I think Don's foot has always been once one foot out the door ever since AEW formed because he was probably like, oh, damn, I could have, um, you know, I'll use another uh, female analogy. It's kind of like uh, you've been waiting for this girl to be single for a long time and doesn't seem like she ever is. So you move on with another girl and then like the day you do the other one's single and you're just now you're not committed to what you're doing and you're just waiting (laughs) for that opportunity to get out of it so you can go chase the other girl and you know that's what I think happened I think people within the company need to be all in and I don't think there's enough that are all in like we even see it from the wrestlers right when we say you know who's the impact guys it's it's always you know Sammy Callahan Moose Eddie Edwards um, Rosemary like we know who's all in right and then we we know who's who's not really. We I'm not gonna say names right now. The Good Brothers, like we know who's who who's not all in. So are you gonna tell me that when the Good Brothers contract isn't up, that Don Cal's not gonna try to poach him over to AEW? Like he's gonna try to poach all sorts of Impact talents because now there's now he's the bridge. He's the invisible hand. He's the bridge between both companies now to where the entire roster now has a connection at AEW. So I think this. I, I think um, I think it's gonna be bad. I think it's ultimately gonna be bad for the company. But um, I am throwing out that out there about Kenny Omega that he always does one set of ta- you know one day of tapings, does what he has to do, and that's it. Like there's no reason for him to stay for the whole thing. You know if they just record out of order, it makes sense. So all right. So last thing I want to talk about the the hot thing with Slammiversary is always who's gonna show up at Slammiversary, right? Well. You know, WWE now has some more talents that they've released. Now, these these talents uh, will not show up at Slammiversary. That's impossible because they're still in their 90-day non-compete clause, unlike the first group that they initially uh, released. So here's the names that uh, is being reported. I'm looking at Fightful.com here. And this is a this is a crazy list because if this was the list that came out a couple months ago, now Slammiversary would get really, really interesting. But the list is Braun Strowman, Aleister, Bl- uh, Aleister Black, I'm sorry, uh, Ruby Riot, Lana, Santana Garrett, and Buddy Murphy. So you can cross Braun Strowman off the, off the list right right now. Like he's not coming to impact. Uh, Aleister Black, I, I would say, I don't know, 60 40. I think there's a 40% chance. I think, uh, you know, AW will be in play. I think Ring of Honor would be in big play for him, too. Ruby Riot's an interesting one. Um, she was really talented. What was her name? Heather Lovelace or something like that on the independent scene. I, but I know she was pretty talented and never really got that uh, support in WWE to really move forward and like actually accomplish something. Now, she's the ex of Jake something. I believe the ex. I don't believe they're together anymore. I could be totally wrong. I don't know if they're on good terms. I have no clue whatsoever. But if they are on good terms, you know, she would be an excellent fit. I think she could work. Um, I don't mean work as in wrestle, but I think she could work as as an addition to the knockouts, or she might return to the indies. I don't know, but she she's definitely one that she could um, she could probably have her choice to be honest. Uh, outside of AEW, I don't think there's going to be interest there. But I think if you look at the smaller companies, Impact, Ring of Honor, um, and uh, NWA. Um, and I don't know. I don't think MLW has a women's division. But if you look at the the smaller companies, I bet she would have. Her choice of where she wants to go. Uh, Lana was released. You, you can cross that one off the list too. That's not happening. Santana Garrett. 
this was someone that I thought Impact needed to get a long time ago. You know, there was a time where I was like, yo, you need Santana Garrett, you need Tessa Blanchard, and you need Rachel Ellering. This was years ago. Uh, so you want to you make this division like what it used to be? Um, unfortunately, I'm not quite, but quite up, high up on Rachel at, at the moment as I was at the, back then, but I am really excited she's part of the company. Uh, we saw how it worked out with Tessa Blanchard, uh, but she did bring that star power. Santana Garrett, um, yo, this girl, she can work. She can wrestle her ass off. Um, she's hot. Like, she's a 10, you know what I mean? Like, she would just be a, a tremendous addition. That's another one who could really do something in Impact. She's ha- worked with Impact a little bit in the past. Uh, they've just never been able to bring her on, you know? It seemed for a long time no one could bring her on because I think she she was doing something on the outside in medical or dental field or something along those lines. I don't quite remember. So I think the independent schedule was what she wanted to do. But I think she's going to look for, now that you know she's no longer part of the company, I think she's going to look for a schedule that fits her personal life the best. She might decide that that's um, the Impact one, the NWA one. You know, she's going to find out what which one works best for her. And that's another one, again, I don't... I don't she would be good enough to be in AEW, obviously, but they have their women's division is pretty big at this point, and it's to me it's a lot more talented of a division than it gets credit for. I don't see her fit there. I don't see where it works, you know. So uh, Impact would be a great home for her, her. And then Buddy Murphy was the last one. Uh, he's not a star to me, um, but he there's probably a good chance Impact would would land him. I think there's an excellent chance of that. Actually, I don't see. I don't see him going anywhere else, but, you know, he's someone that doesn't really bring a lot of, um, you know, I guess you say star power, but he doesn't bring, like, he's not going to be Buddy. He's not going to be Buddy Murphy when he shows up. You know, he's going to be whoever, and at that point, he's just a dude. He's just a guy, you know? Uh, kind of like, you know, Brian Myers, you know, when Kerr Hawk is down Brian Myers, but he also, he already had some success as Brian Myers. People knew him as Brian Myers. Just kind of people knew Zach Ryder as Matt Cardona. You know, there's some people who can they can return to their name and use their personal name in it. That's something, you know. But like a dude like this, um, towards the end when I stopped watching it, uh, NXT, you know, he was the champions with Murphy and Buddy and I forgot his other his other friend, his buddy that got released also a while back. But I saw this tag team and they were the champions for a while. I was like, dude, these guys aren't stars, you know. Like that's when. NXT, in my opinion, started getting like super vanilla to where that wasn't the case before. Um, but I, I could absolutely see Impact bringing this dude in, but he would need a complete makeover. So is it really like worth it at that point? That's how you got to look at some of these dudes. Like, you know, you're probably going to have to pay him good money because he came from WWE, but then you're, you know, who is he? You're starting from scratch with the dude at the same time, you know? So I don't know, but but the, at the end of the day, I would say that uh, Ruby Wright and Santana Garrett probably are the ones most likely. Uh, I'll throw Buddy Murphy as a number three. Um, probably Alistair Black as a distant number four. And then Braun Strowman and Lana, like 0% chance. Absolutely no way in hell we see them. But that's what I got for you guys today. It's your boy BQ. This is the B-Side Podcast. Thanks for checking me out. I will talk to you soon. Peace.